Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to the video for what is the map variable. The map variable was introduced to Blueprints earlier than 4.15, but only for editing purposes. In 4.15, we can now actually create maps in the editor, and we'll cover what they are and what they do. Maps are basically like a structure that can contain two things, and they are related and linked to each other. That's probably an easiest way of thinking about it. Maybe even like a two-dimensional array. But they are symbiotic. Basically, they are linked to each other, and you have a value and a key is how it works out. The key is unique. The value is what the key is pointing to. So let me show you basically what I mean by that. If we go over here and we'll create a new variable, and we'll call this one our new var, and we click on this drop down list, we now have a few options. Before we could toggle between the variable and maps or set, sorry, the variable and arrays, now we have sets and maps. You'll notice I cannot change this into a map. Booleans and a few other different variable types, text would be another one of them, cannot be set properly, not text. Um, one of these other ones, I think it is text. Yeah, there we go, text. Um, cannot be set as a valid entry inside of a map. And you'll notice it gives you this error. New var has key type of text, which cannot be hashed and is therefore invalid. And if we tried to change this to example back to a Boolean, and we did the same thing, we're going to get issues. Basically, if it's got a value that can be directly referenced, so things like your integers and your floats, names, strings, things like that, even objects, they can be part of a map. Other things like Booleans and text cannot because they're handled differently in the background. And it will tell you if it doesn't work right now. But here's the point of it. Let's say we have a string and we have a integer. We'll go ahead and save this and you'll notice it compiled out fine. We could now store values inside of here directly mapping. And you'll notice when I hit plus, unlike an array, it won't let me continue. It says it couldn't add it because there's already a default value. Remember I mentioned that the keys are unique. Right now it's treating this key of nothing as a valid entry. I cannot have more than one entry with nothing. I'd have to have something like an apple. Now I can add another entry and I could have something like a pear. And you could continue on. And you can directly reference things. So this could, for example, could be an orange. And I could see I have 10 apples and five pears and four oranges. Now I have a direct correlation inside my map. I have a key, apple, value 10. Key, pear, value five. And I say keys and values because those are the things you pull out, which we'll see down here. So for my example here, if I hit play and I hit make potion, it's going to tell me make potion one. I hit make potion, make potion zero. I hit make potion and now it says missing ingredient. Basically what I'm doing, if we look at our player's inventory, is we have some ingredients. One bottle, two herbs, five potions. And we're checking to see if we have herbs and bottles. And then we're removing things from our inventory over here. Basically, I'm saying, hey, find the key with the name of herb and give me the value. Find key of bottle and give me the value. Seeing if I have any of those, they're greater than zero. And if I do, I'm gonna go ahead and make a potion. If not, I'm missing an ingredient. And then after I'm done, since I'm gonna reuse the bottle basically, I'm just gonna get rid of my herb. Now that's one thing to note here. You'll notice that I'm using the add node to change the value. Because these are unique, the add node is how you can store and update a value. You'd basically plug in our inventory, which is our map, tell it which key we're going off of, in this case the herb, and tell it what our new value is. And I'm simply grabbing our old value, subtracting one, and setting it. So that's why it's basically able to check. So it's basically a relational database, or a list, or a dictionary. In terms of nodes, we have these nodes right here, which are pretty simple. We have the length. First, one thing to note, most of these nodes are going to be very similar if you've ever used arrays. So we have our length. Plug it in, we get the value of our length, which is how long it is. We have contains and find. I honestly don't know the difference why you'd use uh, contains other than find 
unless it may be quicker. Contains takes in our map and our key and outputs if it was there. Find does the same thing. Takes in our thing, adds our key, outputs if it was there, and also outputs the value. So the difference between the two of these, I don't know why you'd ever use contains basically. If you ever need the value, better use find. Let me plug this one here so you can see it colored. There we go. Keys. Remember how I mentioned we have keys and values. This basically outputs all the keys or all the values, and it gives you a new array of those values. Because technically, when you get all the keys, you get back out an array of the values. So this will give us back all the keys in our map, and this will give us back all the values in our map. And then since it's an array, you can do whatever you want with it. Remove, well, that should be pretty simple. Put in our key, and it removes it from our entry. Since these things are unique, that's one thing to keep in mind. Now you'll notice in here, we don't have a git, a, just a git. We have the find and contain. Maps are not guaranteed to be in a specific order. It's, it's a list of stuff. We don't care about the order. We just can care about the keys and the values. So that's why remove doesn't take in a specific index. You're just simply removing something from the map. Add, again, pretty simple. We add something, put in our key and our new value, and it adds it. If it already exists, so for example, if this key is already in there, then it will go ahead and set it to the new one. This is both our update and our add node. Clear? Well, that should be pretty simple. If you notice there's no output, it's simply going to take in our map and clear it and give us a blank map. And that's it. That's our map. Those are the basics. Those are our nodes. That's how it works. It's really nice, as you can see, when you have things simple. One thing I've used it for, in example, is for multiplayer. I map the player ID in multiplayer to the widget for that player in a multiplayer environment. So that way I know when I need to adjust the widget, say the health of a player, I know exactly which widget to adjust because I have the player ID as the key and then the widget as the value. So that's it. That's going to wrap up our map variable. As you can see, it's really simple and nice to use when you need to map one value to another.